What's up guys, welcome back to LSJTV for today's commentary. Today's video was originally planned to be a walkthrough video, just like what I used to do in my home gym, but as you'll see throughout this video, the gym was packed, all the racks were taken, the dumbbell section was full, everything was full, the gym was just too busy to do a, a physical walkthrough. So here we are with the commentary, this video has been a long time coming, I announced on my Instagram about a month ago that I was thinking of doing this video. If you aren't following me, then the links are in the description box down below. So as you guys can see by the title of this video, today's video is about how I've been improving my squat. Now that doesn't necessarily mean shifting more weight, that means doing my squat in a safer and more comfortable way personally for myself. I've been doing this for about three weeks now after seeing Lex Griffin's video on a similar topic. Now he'd been told by a guy named Omar Isuf, for those of you who don't know he's a very experienced trainer who literally just seems to know everything and he recognised that Lex, much like myself, struggles to get depth in his squat through a lack of flexibility. To be more accurate, a lack of dorsiflexion. This basically means pulling your foot up to your shin, in other words the opposite of pointing your toe to the floor. So to get over this issue, I've been doing a number of things differently when warming up for leg day. This includes usual leg swings and all that kind of stuff that you've just seen, but as you can see just a minute ago, just sitting in the squat position for a prolonged period of time, sometimes up to a minute, depending on how I'm feeling that day, this is just getting your body used to being in that squat position and warming up the relative muscles that are going to be used in that exercise. So the more important thing I'm talking about is the dorsiflexion. As you can see me here, I put both feet, one in front of the other, firmly planted and lean forwards. All that's doing is bringing your toe up to your shin, keeping the pressure on that front foot just to make sure that you're stretching the right muscles ready for the movement. Because the idea of that is to loosen up the ankle joint, loosen up the general area around the ankle so that you can squat ready for the heavy squats without causing yourself any pain. Going back to the beginning of the video where I was just holding myself in the squat position, this really helps me personally, I feel, warm up my kneecaps so I don't get any pain while squatting, especially because of what I'm doing with the bar here, just holding myself, doing a few pause reps right before my in-between set. As you guys know, if you've been subscribed to the channel for a long time now, you know that when I train legs, I like to do an in-between set, not just the bar, but not the full squatting weight. So here I am with just one plate on each side, 60 kilos, mentally and physically preparing myself for the heavy set of 100 kilos which is coming up next. For you Americans who are watching this video, for anybody else who works in pounds, that works out at around 220-221 pounds. So here I am with my working set, as you can see me motivating myself here. This has become kind of my routine before I do my squats, sort of firmly placing my feet, making sure my hands are exactly equal. I don't know, it's just become sort of a routine and it helps me, I feel, mentally prepare myself before I squat. And another thing I do is always pause, I don't go straight into the squat, I make sure I'm set, make sure my feet are nice and equal and then I go into the squat. And as you can see here guys, much better than in my old videos, much better depth, still not there, there's still a long way to go, but it is a lot better than it used to be because of this dorsiflexion exercise and that is in less than a month guys. Just think if you do this consistently for a year, for two years, for, it, for your entire life, even if you just practice it at home, loosen up before you go to bed, anything, anything that you can do that is going to enhance your training, do it guys, because that is how you're going to make more progress in a quicker time. So moving on to the next exercise, in fact as you can see in this clip guys what I was talking about how busy the gym was, look at all those people in the background, I just wouldn't have been able to do a walkthrough. But anyway, for the form for this exercise just make sure you're keeping those heels firmly planted on the floor, if you're not then the weight is probably too heavy, I don't like to go too heavy on this exercise anyway because personally I feel it hurts my back but that's just me so figure out what's best for you guys and then go with that. Just make sure you keep those heels firmly planted on the floor and firmly driving through them, contracting the glutes at the top of the movement as well. So guys, the next movement of the day was leg extensions. And one thing I really wanna highlight is, as you can see me doing here, adjusting the machine so I'm making sure it's at the right height for myself. So that's not gonna cause me any pain and it's gonna allow me to mentally and physically focus on using just the quads to move up that weight. One thing I would definitely recommend with leg extensions is not going heavier but actually going lighter and really focusing on the contraction because your kneecap actually isn't that big of a joint and you're putting a hell of a lot of pressure on it if you're going too heavy. So if you can't hold the weight at the top like you see here, one, two, and lower it back down again, then it's probably too heavy. So drop the weight, drop the ego for the sake of not getting injured and being able to stay in the gym. So the next movement, the same form applies. This is a hamstring seated curl. If you can't hold it at the bottom, again, it's probably too heavy, so go light. Even if that means that you feel like you have to do more reps, then do it, guys, because it's going to reduce that risk of injury, and you're not going to want to be out of the gym because you went too heavy on a hamstring curl. I mean, come on, what a stupid reason to be out of the gym. 
But anyway, that's my rant over. So moving on to the last movement of the day, and that was calf raises. And one thing I love to focus on in calf raises is getting that time under tension. It's such a small movement, and so I like to do higher reps on this one, because what high reps is going to do is tear as many muscle fibers as possible, because you're going to have that time under tension. The muscle is going to be strained. It's going to be under tension for a longer period of time, rather than if you just went straight up and down again. So what I like to do personally is hold one, two, and lower it again. Hold one, two, and lower it again, just to make sure I get that time and attention with this exercise and really feel the squeeze in the calf as well. So that is it for today's video guys, hopefully you enjoyed it, if you did let me know by leaving a like, comment and subscribe if you're new to the channel, hopefully I'll get to do a walkthrough video for you guys fairly soon because that is my favourite kind of video to do, just makes me feel like you guys can interact with me more because it is raw footage and it almost feels like you're in the room with me doing the workout. But let me know if you want me to do that. Leave a comment in the comment section or leave a like. Let me know, guys. But as I say, that is it for today, guys. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. And remember, no regrets. I'll see you guys in the next video.